One spot remains for the Conference USA title. Rodney Howard looks to take Western Kentucky to the top, while Justin Porter and Middle Tennessee look for another upset in CUSA. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. From Huntsville, Alabama, Conference USA semifinal number two matches the seven seed Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders against the three seed Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. In Conference USA semifinal number one, a major upset as the five seed UTEP takes out the one seed regular season champ Sam Houston. The Miners are on to the CUSA championship game. With Tiffany Blackman and the General Avery Johnson, I'm Carter Blackburn. And we know what we're going to see out of one of these teams today. Western Kentucky, one of the highest tempo teams in all of college basketball. This game is all about defense, Carter, with Middle Tennessee State. Can they string together enough stops? Because Western Kentucky averaging 80.5 points a game leading the conference. They can really score the basketball. Well, Western Kentucky has a great starting five, but they bring one of their best players off the bench. The sixth man of the year in Conference USA is Rodney. Howard. Yeah, when you look at Howard, the big guy inside, this team really loves to get the ball to him, especially as soon as he comes in the game. Plays inside out. They're like a non-traditional team where other teams wants to play outside in. They wants to punch this ball inside to the big fella. And for Middle Tennessee, Mr. Everything, Justin Porter. Yeah, Justin Porter, highly skilled player. We know he can knock down a three-point shot. This is creativity off the dribble. Playing through contact. He's a Big guy in a small package. I love to watch this kid go to work. A dangerous seven seed, Middle Tennessee. They were picked to win the league before the season. Now a victory away from the championship game. It's the Blue Raiders versus the Hilltoppers. Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky split in the regular season. Now they meet in Conference USA semifinal number two. The Blue Raiders coached by Nick McDevitt. Now in his sixth season as Middle Tennessee head coach, the 2022 Conference USA Coach of the Year. A major upset win over Louisiana Tech in the quarterfinals. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Kubota. We told you all about Justin Porter. Elias King joins him in the backboard, but Jared Coleman Jones has had the hot hand of late for Middle Tennessee. So a big man matchup with Rodney Howard coming off the bench. Don McHenry, first team all conference USA, had 22 points in the win for Western Kentucky over Middle Tennessee. Steve Lutz now in his first season coaching Western Kentucky, led Texas A&M Corpus Christi to Southland tournament titles in 2022 and 2023. Let's check in with Tiffany. Well, Carter, just like Sam Houston, Middle Tennessee comes into this game against Western Kentucky with some fresh legs. Coach Nick McDevitt told us they spent their off day by staying off of their feet. They did watch the Hilltoppers game from their hotel last night, and what jumped out to him about them, as you guys alluded to, is the pace at which Western Kentucky plays. He said, we cannot let their pace of play shock us today, and that what differentiates them from other teams is that they really like to get out and play fast on made baskets by their opponents, and he said, just like those old teams that Roy Williams coached at North Carolina, guys. Which is high praise as we take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Ace, the helpful place. Yes, it with Middle Tennessee State, Coleman and Jones, they really have to go, uh, Coleman Jones has to go north of 18 points. Stop fouling, limit your fouls on defense, that's what no hands mean. Western Kentucky inside scoring, points in the paint, and they need reserve duty, points off the bench. Well, here's a big number when Middle Tennessee beat Western Kentucky in Murfreesboro. 23 of 29 from the foul line for Middle Tennessee. So the Blue Raiders got to the line and converted those opportunities. That is a formula for success for Middle Tennessee. I want to touch on one thing Tiffany also talked to Coach McDevitt about is individual tendencies of your opponent, that's very critical for them. It's not just about team defense. He wants his teams to, to really zone in on the individual strengths and weaknesses of Western Kentucky. 
Two seconds into the game, we have a foul. It is on Brandon Newman, called by Amy Bonner, who's out there with Gary Maxwell and Antonio Petty. That is a, that's a new one. Two seconds in off the opening tip, and then Newman comes back to get a block, sending Western Kentucky on the run. Defense to offense, the missed three from Newman. But a second chance, Allen heaves it and hits it, and Western Kentucky is off and running. But you see how fast that shot went up? You cannot relax on defense. Steve Lutz, Western Kentucky's first-year head coach, telling us if this game is in the 60s, is advantage Middle Tennessee. Anything north of that, advantage Western Kentucky. Johnson backing down. This is Jacob Johnson, the junior, around the shot blocking Fa. Jacob Johnson, former Long Island University and the UMKC Kangaroo. The only two points in that win against Louisiana Tech. He moved into the starting lineup after, you know, Cam Weston went down with that injury, second game of the season. McHenry misses his first look for Western Kentucky. That's the major storyline of Middle Tennessee's season. They were picked to win Conference USA along with Liberty preseason, but you lose your terrific point guard, Cam Weston, two games in. They've had to adjust, including Porter from three. Justin Porter gives Middle Tennessee the early lead. Yeah, Porter struggled in that first half against uh, Louisiana Tech, scored 18 points in the second half. Reach-in foul called on Justin Buford. Middle Tennessee is going to have to hit a few of these threes. Yeah, it's like trading places, and now we're trading threes. I know you watched that movie. I love Carter. trading places. <laughs> but, yeah, now where to find the open spot, Porter moving away from the defense. It's amazing what one or two steps mean to your left or right when you're trying to find that open spot. Well, we know Middle Tennessee could heave it. When they lost at Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee shot 42 threes in the game. McHenry rejected inside. Coleman Jones has a block, sending the Blue Raiders on the run. Coleman Jones attacking off the bounce, spinning inside. Shot fake, can't finish. Rebound lost out of bounds. It's off Middle Tennessee. Hilltopper basketball. And one of the reasons why Coleman Jones is a huge factor in this game, he's got to score more than 18 points because he, with the games against Western Kentucky, when he didn't play effective basketball on the offensive end, they really struggled. Eight double-doubles, including... 16 and 10, a win over Louisiana Tech. Newman is fouled on the way to the hoop. Looks like Porter will get his first. When Middle Tennessee State won that game over uh, Western Kentucky. He had 20 points and 11 rebounds back on February 24th. So again, they split the regular season with each team winning on its home court, but it was. A blowout win, Western Kentucky put up 88 when they played in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Fa off the inbound, bothered by King and he misses it. Following up and one. Sticking with it, Babakar Fa. Yeah, Mr. Fa stuck with it. Good little underneath out of bounds, back pick. Tried to clear out the side. Mr. Farr from Senegal. I, I visited Senegal, Senegal. I had a player named Sagana Jop that played for oh, me. Great player. And how was your trip to Senegal? It was, it was amazing. I went from, and I went from Senegal down to Johannesburg. Hmm. And now you've made it to Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> Although you've been here a couple times when you were coaching the Crimson Tide. I've been here a couple times. Yeah, I actually coached two games in this, in this arena. So. Got a problem with one of the clocks. The above the backboard clock just went out. So Gary Maxwell stops it down. And in our first semifinals game today, I think that's what uh, there was a little concern about that clock. So a quick timeout for both Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. There is Cam Weston, the 
All-Conference USA point guard. I mean, just two games into the season, out with a knee injury, really devastating for Middle Tennessee. So Justin Porter's role went from being a two guard to being an everything guard for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, and I love, you know, it shows a lot of character about Cam Weston. Just, you know, you're out, but you're still there with your team and you're participating. Well, we know Middle Tennessee is the seventh seed, but it was actually a four-way tie for fourth place, including the five-seed UTEP, who's reached the Conference USA Championship game. So that seven next to Middle Tennessee's name and the four games under 500, a little bit of an aberration because this is still a dangerous team as a seventh seed. And while we take a look at the clocks here in Huntsville, we'll step away for 30 seconds. Well, we are still working on the clocks here in Huntsville, Alabama at the Vaughn Braun Center. 6-5 early start for Western Kentucky. The win over New Mexico State was the 20th of the season for Western Kentucky. The 48th time in program history. Western Kentucky has won 20 games. Over the years, they have won 33 conference tournaments back to 1932. And yet Western Kentucky seeking its first Conference USA Championship. But this is one of the maybe under the radar great programs in college basketball in Western Kentucky. And speaking of first, Coach Lutz in his first season with the program, you know, he's led the Hilltoppers to a, you know, first 21 season since 2021 season. I had uh, his game last year in the uh, first four when he was at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. He uh, actually led them to the tournament two consecutive years. And they beat Southeast Missouri State for the first NCAA tournament win in program history. Then assisted at Creighton, Purdue, SMU, among others. It has been long run as an assistant before the wins in the Southland tournament and now in the Conference USA. How about UTEP with come from behind wins over Liberty in the quarters and the regular season champ Sam Houston in semifinal number one. Yeah, whichever one of these teams advanced to play against UTEP, you better remember, independent of how UTEP is playing, they are never out of the game. A 25 to five run in the second half for UTEP. Middle Tennessee turns it over. McHenry in the open floor. Somebody's open. McHenry lost it out of bounds. It's Middle Tennessee basketball. McHenry turns it over. Yeah, Allen was wide open in the left corner and just couldn't make the pass. Our clock issue has been resolved on this end of the floor. Jalen Jordan blitzed. Vaughn picks it up and dunks it down emphatically for Western Kentucky. Man, he should have been in the NBA slam dunk contest. <laughs> he would have won with that dunk. <laughs> and it comes off aggressive D, forcing back-to-back -back turnovers by Middle Tennessee. Nearly a third straight turnover. Marshall hits the deck. Just the energy. King lost the handle. There is the third straight turnover by the Blue Raiders. Moore steps in. The transition three won't go. Boarded by Green. But this game is being played at Western Kentucky's pace. They, they, they want to get a shot up in the first seven to ten seconds of, on the shot clock. Green heaves the three and rattles it down. Trey Green, the sophomore from Baltimore, capable of lighting it up. And he's really grown into his role as the season has progressed. Woo. Answer from Allen. Allen has his second three for Western Kentucky. Trey Green has been shooting 41% against Conference USA opponents. Jacob Johnson attacks, kicks. King off the bounce with a feed inside for Coleman Jones. Look like Allen bumped knees and got hurt. He's down underneath the basket. He's limping. Yeah, this is a four on five situation for Western Kentucky. Missed the three boarded by Coleman Jones, and Allen is still limping back on deep. 
is going to try to survive on this possession, but he's really limping bad. Timeout on the next dead ball. Three won't go. Boarded by McHenry as Allen lips down the floor, and now we're going to get a stoppage of play, sending us to the under-16 timeout. But Dante Allen limps back to the Western Kentucky bench. Hilltoppers by three. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more. By AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. First year for Conference USA's tournament in Huntsville, Alabama. Semi-final number two. Western Kentucky has an early 11-8 lead. A couple of threes by Dante Allen, but he is on the bench after an apparent knee injury for the Hilltoppers. He's back in the locker room, in fact, for Western Kentucky. So Lander into the game, fires a three and knocks it down. Christian Lander, the former Indiana Hoosier. Yeah, and that's when Western Kentucky gets into their driving kick game, or dribble drive is what some coaches like to call it. He's really just trying to suck in the defender and penetrate the pitch. Porter nearly walks. It's a 10-3 run for Western Kentucky. Three made threes already. King launches one for Middle Tennessee, leaves it short, boarded by Moore. But man, it's really good ball movement overall for both teams. Lander tries another one. Lander hot hand off the bench. Four made threes in the early going and a 14-3 run for the Hilltoppers. Man, Landers look like a professional scorer on those last two threes. Yeah, man, back to back, the lefty. Nice little penetrating pitch there. Shot ready on those shots and now drag, pick and roll, which means the last big guy down the floor sets a little rub, screen. Well, if this game is all about tempo, it is advantage Western Kentucky big time. Porter and King, the great backward from Middle Tennessee, both have a personal foul each, which doesn't bode well for the Blue Raiders. Yeah, that's why Western Kentucky runs even after makes. They want possessions, high possession game. Jordan fouled on the three-point shot. Three free throws coming for the seventh year senior, Jalen Jordan. Foul was on Lander, his first. First two years at St. Francis of Brooklyn, he has had two ACL tears during his time at Middle Tennessee. So year number seven for Jalen Jordan out of Conyers, Georgia. Yeah, he scored 32 points. Uh, despite only playing 49 minutes in his last three games, so we know he can put the ball in the basket. Gets the second. Hot shooting start for Western Kentucky. They've made five of their last seven. Jordan gets just one of three from the free throw line. Again, look how fast. Western Kentucky gets the ball up the floor, advances the ball. Howard into the game, the CUSA sixth man of the year. Off the curl, Newman long two. Tap out by Howard, second chance. Lander attacks, two more for Christian Lander. That's eight off the bench for the senior from Evansville, Indiana. Yeah, but Rodney Howard, who's averaging 10, 10 points a game, we know he can rebound the basketball. Get that little tip out. Coleman Jones steps out, misses the three. Buford on the offensive glass. Finds Johnson. There's Lander with a rebound to add to his stat line. This is the time early in transition. They're going to look for the big fella, Rodney Howard, trying to duck in. You see him, they missed him inside. Get it to Howard on the opposite post. Quick double. Yeah, now they tried to repost him. 
Howard couldn't handle it. Trey Green with the feet inside for Jacob Johnson. In the paint, Johnson push shot, rolls out. Howard fighting for the rebound. Johnson comes away with it. Big offensive rebound. Kick out, missed three by Jordan. He's going to follow up his miss. Jordan puts it up again. And Jalen Jordan with a hard-earned bucket for the Blue Raiders. And really could have taken two consecutive threes in a row. But decided to shot fake and take the easy mid-range. Three won't go for Lander on the heat check three. But eight points off the bench for Christian Lander and the quick trigger Hilltoppers have an early eight point lead. You're watching Racket Week presented by Kubota. Western Kentucky has the early advantage on Middle Tennessee in CUSA semifinal number two. Moments ago, Tiffany Blackman spoke with Steve Lutz. Coach Lutz, you guys got some turnovers. You open up on a run. What do you like about the way you guys are setting the tone with your tempo? Well, I think that our effort's really good on the defensive end of the basketball. Um, other than the last possession, we've done a good job of limiting them one shot. And if we're going to end up winning this game, we're going to need to limit them to one shot the entire night long. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We talk about Western Kentucky's offense, but their defense has been pretty solid to start in this game as well. Defense has been really key. Uh, Middle Tennessee State started three for five from the field, but since uh, they're only one for eight. So he's absolutely right. He's got to limit uh, Middle Tennessee State to one shot because we know they want to get out here. That's abundantly clear. <laughs> Coleman Jones has chipped away. Run down in the backcourt. Got a double dribble called on Brandon Newman. Oh, I don't know about that one. Rarely see that one. Gary yeah. Maxwell saw a double dribble. Yeah, it looked like the defender touched the ball off. So here's the steal. They both are. Oh, yeah. What'd you think? Did Porter get a hand? Double on that? dribble, double dribble. All right. Yep. Good call. Buford down the baseline with the dunk for Middle Tennessee. I'm sorry, Carter. That got me out of my seat. I got to behave myself at this conference USA semifinal. No, no, no. <laughs> Jumping out of your seat is encouraged. Taking flight, as they call it here in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, we were just giving Western Kentucky ready for their defense, and they allowed a dunk. Here's Howard off the glass. Rodney Howard, the fifth-year senior. Yeah. Middle Tennessee is going to have to send some help. He, he cannot allow them to play one-on-one -on -one against uh, any of their big guys. Has a career high, 20 points off the bench. The quarterfinal win over New Mexico State. Coleman Jones misses his second look from three. Yeah, he's not even really being aggressive to attempt to drive the basketball. He's really looking one-dimensional, just attempting contested three-point shots. We'll see if he mixes it up because we know who can mix it up inside. That's a travel called on Rodney Howard. Let's check in with Tiffany. Hey, guys, give you a quick update on Deontay Allen for the Hilltoppers. He's questionable with a knee injury. We saw him limp off back to the locker room, so we'll have to see if he can get back to this one, guys. Had a medical redshirt year his freshman year at Kentucky. This is his second year with Western Kentucky, but that was a nasty-looking yeah. call by Dante Allen. Yeah, and that's why we decided not to show the replay because it didn't look good, so... Justin Porter, the junior from Houston, set it up for Middle Tennessee. To, to Buford in the corner, the dunk, and now a three for Justin Buford. McHenry pushing, floating, Don McHenry. Man, the easiest three in basketball on any level is that corner three. You got a guy as talented as Buford. You can make 35% of his threes. You got to stay on him on that in that strong side corner. Middle Tennessee has three made threes in the first 10 minutes of this game. They made 10 when they beat Western Kentucky in Murfreesboro. Yeah, you always want the guard to force the ball to go back to the other side, similar to this possession. Jordan, tough two, boarded by McHenry. 
First team All Conference USA guard for Western Kentucky. That's an offensive foul called on Rodney Howard. Warner Ladder is the proud title sponsor of the Naismith Coach of the Year Award. Join us over Final Four weekend as we highlight this year's winners right here on CBS Sports Network. Nick McDevitt was last year's Conference USA Coach of the Year for Middle Tennessee. They have fought through multiple injuries this year, Middle Tennessee. Highlighted by Cam Weston at point guard, but the big win over Louisiana Tech in the quarters. Porter crosses over, misses the tough floater. Yeah, but on in, on that possession, Jacob Johnson, he's got to be more aggressive to score. They're not even guarding him. McHenry misses in tight. Porter runs it down. Loof hits the three. The freshman from Leander, Texas, off the bench with the fourth made three for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, another Conference USA all-freshman team selection. You saw the, the arc and the release on his shot. Man, that was textbook. So some life for Middle Tennessee, the seventh seed. Have matched the shooting start for Western Kentucky. A 10-4 run right now for Middle Tennessee. And both of these teams, you know, they pr travel well. Middle Tennessee's twice won the Conference USA tournament. Seven to shoot here. Lander, kick to the corner. McHenry, three ball, corner, one oh, goal. Nice job boxing out. Jalen Jordan. Yeah, Jalen Jordan. It's not always about the size, but it's the effort and the toughness to want to rebound. Buford tries the three. Tapped out, McHenry runs it down. Looks up the floor. Passes on the three, takes a tough two. Rebound to Justin Porter. And this, this is like a little bit of a track beat here. Which you would think is advantage Western Kentucky. Porter, nice dish. Johnson misses, finds Jordan in the corner. Would that be an assist? Wipe it out. Foul on Middle Tennessee. The Blue Raiders fight back. It's a four-point game. Western Kentucky has a four-point lead on Middle Tennessee, but the Blue Raiders hanging. Moments ago, Nick McDevitt with our Tiffany Blackman. Coach, you told us the pace of Western Kentucky was going to be a concern. How do you feel like you all have handled their tempo? Well, we gave up a couple too many open threes early. Allen and Lander to start out with four for five from three. Uh, they're, they're really good at after your scores, after your makes. They get out and, and, and transition awfully fast, so you got to be on point there. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Saw that note, four assists for Middle Tennessee. That's good news because this Blue Raider team averages only 10 assists per game. Only six teams in Division I have fewer assists per game than Middle Tennessee. Yikes. Wow. But that's what happens when you lose your point guard. Exactly. And when your point guard is now in some sort of supporting coaching role. Avery Johnson had 10 assists and a half many times. <laughs> Just had good players. Good teammates. Great teammates. Well said. Porter attacks. Misses in tight. Rebound for Luke, who's fouled and earns a trip to the free throw line. Tomorrow at 5.30 Eastern, catch the Women's Conference USA Championship right here in Probst Arena. See who remains the last team standing for an automatic bid to this year's NCAA tournament here on CBS Sports Network. Both the one seed Middle Tennessee and two seed Liberty still alive. Semifinals tonight here in Huntsville. And Luke is getting some minutes in their last game against Western Kentucky. You know, he only played nine minutes before fouling out. So he fouled out nine minutes. Yikes. Loof had the three off the bench. Misses his first free throw look. Yeah, that was a lane violation on Western Kentucky. 
Well, that draws the ire of Steve Lutz. You get over two from the foul line and give Luf a chance at a third shot on the lane violation. He's got to give this shot a chance. When, when the ball hits the front of the rim, that's better, big fella. When that ball hits the front of the rim and it's close to an air ball, that's like my putts. <laughs> you gotta give it a chance, gotta right? Gotta give it a chance, yeah. Follow through. <laughs> Middle Tennessee was great shooting free throws when they beat Western Kentucky by just two for five. The free throw line early in this one against the Hilltoppers. Marshall, that's a tough two. Count it with a foul on Lou. What a nice power drive by Tyrone Marshall Jr. Boy, he's really good getting down here with his right hand, his strong hand. He was really proud of himself. <laughs> Talk about a tough two. Finishes off the three-point play. And it's funny, and even in this game and the last game, it's, you've seen more and more a sprinkle of guys that have played junior college basketball. You know, not just transferring from another four-year school. Being a former JUCO star yourself, you appreciate it. I wouldn't say a star, but I a would part a participant. <laughs> Johnson on the wing, kick out. Buford thought about the three, lost the handle on the way up, sending the Hilltoppers on the run. Marshall heroes his way in, missed it in tight. Holman Jones has the rebound. You know, we, obviously we've watched Western Kentucky preparing for this game on video, but they're even faster in person. You like the comparison to the Roy Williams Carolina yeah, teams? Yeah, I like that. Elias King finds Porter in the corner. Backcourt mates stolen away. Jack Edlin, the freshman from Louisville, gets a steal. Moore feed down to the post. Shot fake, and Fa draws the foul. And remember, whether it's Fa or Rodney Howard, this team, Western Kentucky, wants to play inside out. It, they will overpass the ball to try to force it in the post because they want single coverage or they want you to double team and then that to activate their three-point shoot. Holman Jones gets his first personal foul now. 16 fouls on Middle Tennessee. Well, not exactly where Western Kentucky wants to play. I mean, they want this game in the 80s and yet that major marker indicative of how this game's gonna go. You still give advantage pace-wise to Western Kentucky. Babakar Farm moved into the starting lineup uh, back in, in December. And he started 23 consecutive games now. Came on when Rodney Howard got injured, so that's when Howard begins coming off the bench. And even though Western Kentucky's second leading scorer, Rodney Howard, still sixth man for the Hilltoppers. Down to the post, Coleman Jones draws two defenders, stepped on the baseline, turnover, Middle Tennessee. Whenever you drive away from a double team baseline, you're bringing a third defender into it. It's called the baseline. See right here? <laughs> Close. Once you see that double team, you, you should know it's somebody else to turn to score the basketball. I'm out of it. Eight turnovers by Middle Tennessee. Odd dumps it off. That's an offensive foul. Charge drawn by Justin Buford. It's on Tegan Moore, his second person. That's a nice job by taking the contact right to the chest right here by Buford. There's really nowhere to go baseline. Two drives baseline with the same result, turnovers. Three turnovers in less than two minutes by Middle Tennessee. They haven't scored in over three minutes. Danger zone here for the Blue Raiders. Coleman Jones 
power dribble, lost it on the way up, stripped from behind by Marshall. And now, Western Kentucky in the fast lane. Somebody's open. Into the corner. He's Three open. goes down, Brandon Newman. Largest lead for Western Kentucky, Hilltoppers by 11. Timeout, Middle Tennessee. Man, I love when that ball has energy. And that's what you just saw. And that's why Western Kentucky up by 11. An 8-0 run by Western Kentucky leads to an 11-point lead, largest for the Hilltop. Yeah, some teams have philosophy. It's called .5. You got .5 seconds to dribble, shoot it, or pass it. And that's what you saw in that demonstration by Western Kentucky. Point five. You saw the ball just move. It didn't really stick in anyone's hands. Good timeout by Nick McDevitt after the 8-0 run by Western Kentucky. Now, Middle Tennessee looking for offense from Porter and King. Here's Porter in Ooh. tight off the window. Justin Porter, tough finish. Yeah, nice little circus shot by Mr. Porter. Only Kiki Tandy of Jacksonville State. More shots this year. In Conference USA. Marshall knocks down the three. The sixth made three of the first half for Western Kentucky. These guys just so many players that can put the ball in the basket in a variety of ways. Inside game, outside, transition. Porter outside, that's five straight for Middle Tennessee from Justin Porter. And we knew he couldn't wait and go scoreless in this game, in this first half against uh, Western Kentucky. So five made threes for Middle Tennessee. That's an offensive foul called on Brandon Newman, his second person. Western Kentucky's on fire from three, shooting 60%. But Justin Porter said, <laughs> I'm joining the party. Eight points for Justin Porter. So he's done his job for Middle Tennessee. Western Kentucky shooting 50% in the game. Here's Porter again. Rebound for five. McHenry, three in transition. Knocks it down, Don McHenry. Seven made threes for Western Kentucky. And you can tell this is Western Kentucky's style of play because you don't see Coach Lux on the sidelines saying, no, 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 bad shot. He's, he was just standing over there calmly. Western Kentucky, seven for 11 from three point. The Hilltoppers bombs away an eight point lead. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. I mean, as much respect as we have for Lightning, the Blue Raider mascot, you're just not going to win a dance-off with Big Red, the iconic mascot for Western Kentucky. That's, a, that's an unfair matchup. And Big Red not only hot hand, red hand for Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers have seven made threes. Yeah, they're seven for 11. Multiple mistakes by Middle Tennessee. And here trying to shortcut and go under this stagger. And uh, Western Kentucky makes them pay the price. Do not go under the screen no. against the Hilltoppers. No, you cannot go under on a set play. Big Red lose a shoe on the dance-off. Need some attention from the training staff as well. Coleman Jones finds Johnson floater out of the timeout, Jacob Johnson. You really see if Coleman Jones can get something going here. Uh, to finish up this half. You know how many points uh, Coleman Jones has? Zero. Same as you and I. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if he can get it going. He's, he's an outstanding player. We know what he's capable of. You said that he needed north of 18. He's yes, got zero. and I'm sticking with it. He better have a big second half. Similar to what his teammate had. 
Johnson cut off. Good D from Western Kentucky. That's Porter out of bounds. Turnover by Middle Tennessee. That is the 10th turnover. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Adam Zucker, Gary Parrish have a full rundown of the scores and do some around college basketball. That's coming up on AT&T at the half. McHenry, floater goes. McHenry has seven points in the first half. Lander has eight, and Western Kentucky leads by 12. And they just keep coming in waves behind the three-point line. Downhill drives. Buford misses the three. Fight for the rebound. Won by Jack Edlin. Holland Bay down the baseline. And now McHenry fires another three. Yep. That was the one time they missed the big fella, Rodney Howard, inside. Howard picks it off on a pass intended for Coleman Jones. Man, I love when big guys don't get the ball on one end of the floor, but they still compete on the defensive end. Lander has 10 in the first half. Western Kentucky leads by 14. That's why it's important for all of the young kids out there, the aspiring basketball players. You got to be able to finish around the basket with your strong hand, which is Lander's left hand, and your off hand, as he did in that right-handed finish. Porter drops it off. Howard gets the rejection. Coleman Jones travels. The 12th turnover by Middle Tennessee. Yeah, you know I love to hang out down on the coast sometime. And look at this coast-to-coast -coast drive here. I know it's spring break in a lot of parts of the country. And here, nice drive. Landers going coast-to-coast. -coast. Very clever with the basketball. Changing gears and speeds. I love it. Look at the turnover numbers for Middle Tennessee. They average 14, 12 in the first half as Western Kentucky's doing it on both ends. Push shot floater goes from McHenry. He has nine in the first half. Lander has 10. And the Hilltoppers, who average 80 a game, are on pace to do even better than that. And it's just hard, especially for Middle right now, when you have a player or two on the floor that are nine three-point shooters, oh, oh. like Western. Eight made three of the first half. 46 on the board for Western Kentucky. Nine straight for the Hilltoppers. Man, it's raining threes here in Huntsville, Alabama for the Hilltoppers. The five seed UTEP awaits in the Conference USA title game. And if they don't foul, they may get one more shot at it. They can't be defending. That's. One more look here. Lander heaves it from oh, he it. Oh, oh, close <laughs> to the ninth made three. Lander has 10. McHenry has 12 in the first half, and nearly the ninth made three of the first half by Lander. And he, he got it off in time. Wow, I thought he was going in. Wow. Man, look at the wrist action. 46-27 at the half. Tiffany's with Steve Lutz. Coach Lutz, eight threes in the first half. Why are you all so effective from beyond? Well, I think that we've been able to establish our inside presence between Rodney and Baba, and that's kind of opened up the outside. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is we've got a lot of defensive stops, and we've been able to get them in transition. Dante Allen going out with a knee injury, questionable to return. Any update on him, and how does that change your game? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk to the trainer at halftime, and I'm sure that if Dante's able, he'll come back. He's a competitor, and uh, yeah, he'll be ready. If he, if he can make it, he'll do it. Thanks, Coach. Yep, no problem. 46-27 Western Kentucky at the half. We'll send you to Adam Zucker and company in New York for AT&T at the half right after these messages. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by PBR Teams. Team up, hang on, take the ride. PBR Teams, July 2024. 
Conference USA semifinal number two, dominated in the first half by Western Kentucky, a 19-point lead. Look at the shooting numbers, 55%, and eight made threes in the first half. This game was going to be a tempo game between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, and Avery Johnson at the half, dare I say, Western Kentucky has dominated the tempo. Yeah, they dominated the tempo, they dominated in fast break points, but eight for 13 from the three-point line, are you kidding me? This team is on fire, and uh, that's why they have this uh, big lead uh, to start the second half. So major second half comeback ahead for Middle Tennessee if they're going to make it to the Conference USA Championship. For more, let's check in with Tiffany Black. Hey, guys, I spoke with Coach Nick McDevitt about Jared Coleman-Jones and how they can get him going. He had a scoreless first half, and he told me that he's got to be a bit more physical, but at the same time, they've got to get him the ball more and try to find ways around what Western Kentucky is doing. He said they are double-teaming him, but we've got to be good out of those double teams and just help to get him back in the flow of this game, guys. When Middle Tennessee beat Western Kentucky in Murphy, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He had 20 and 11. He's been a double-double machine. Seven double-doubles in CUSA play. Had another in the quarterfinal win. So credit Western Kentucky for D'ing up the key big man for Middle Tennessee. And, and I'm going to meet Coach halfway on this. There were times where he wasn't double, and he shot a bailout three. What, didn't try to aggressively put the ball on the floor. So I think he's got to be more impact, impactful and physical on offense. Yeah, 0 for 4 shooting, and two of those were threes. He's only made 19 threes on the year, so that's yeah. not his shot. So maybe if he received a double team one or two times, but it's not like um, they've had three guys around him forcing him to pass the basketball. Justin Porter quicks, picks up his second personal foul. Sending Brandon Newman to the free throw line, the former Purdue Boilermaker. Yeah, remember two seconds into this game, we yeah. had a foul in the first half. 16 seconds into the second half, we have our first foul of the second half. Western Kentucky averages 80 points per game. Tops in CUSA, tempo-wise, one of the quickest tempo teams in college basketball. They've rolled up 48 so far early in the second half. And they eight steals in the first half. We, we expect that from UTEP, right? Eight steals, yeah. UTEP, the nation's leader in steals. Western Kentucky's on pace to outdo the Miners, who will wait in the Conference USA Championship game. That's a missed shot from Elias King. King doesn't have a made field goal in the game. He averages 14. 13 points a game. Another one for Fa. Western Kentucky leads by 23. And we'll see if Western Kentucky with this lead, can they stay focused on the defensive end? Not on this trip. Johnson gets to the rim. And that's sometimes your greatest challenge is not when you're coaching a team that is trying to come back, but maintain the lead. Oh. McHenry push shot. He has 14 in the game. Don McHenry, the junior from Milwaukee. And we just have seen in both games a couple of lefties going to work. That puts a smile on your face. That's an offensive foul on Jacob Johnson. 13 turnovers by Middle Tennessee. Yeah, and I think in this situation, you see, because Johnson is not really a shooter from anywhere on the floor, he's a consistent driver. You got to try to get another shooter on the floor to force um, Western Kentucky to guard all five players. Newman fires a three and hits. Ninth made three of the game for Western Kentucky. And man, these are rhythm threes. Western Kentucky put up 88 when they beat Middle Tennessee in Bowling Green. And they look well on their way. 55 on the board behind nine made threes. Coleman Jones doing work down low, but it's Buford off the window. Timeout Middle Tennessee. Nick McDevitt uses the timeout, sending us to an official timeout. 
McHenry has 14 points in the game on a pair of made threes, nine made threes in the game for Western Kentucky. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Western Kentucky has missed this half. Three for three shooting, one for one from three point, and they are now shooting 59% in the game. And remember at the top of the show, when, during our open, we question, or the biggest question was, can Middle Tennessee get enough stops? Ooh. And get one here as Lander throws up a brick, but it's tipped away by Marshall. Fa offensive foul. Give it right back to Middle Tennessee. First on Babakar Fa. Nice job of giving up your body. Coleman Jones here. Worth repeating that these teams split during the regular season. So Middle Tennessee has a win over Western Kentucky. One of the eight losses. It's a Western Kentucky team that went eight and eight in Conference USA, but they look like they are finding their rhythm. I mean, it was four straight losses at the end of the regular season for Western Kentucky. Now, three of those four were on the road, beginning with the loss at Middle Tennessee, but it was not a, a hot team coming into March, Western Kentucky. Yeah, but it's kind of glass half full, glass half empty. Before that, you know, they won five in a row. Tip out, Newman on oh. the run, draws a bump. Fouls on Buford. Newman heads to the free throw. Line. You know that loss against Liberty, three-point game. FIU, two-point game. Louisiana Tech who played well all season long, six-point game. There's so many variables to, to these conference games. I've been there, I've lived it. You know, playing on the road, injuries. It's just all about getting hot at the right time. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. The five seed UTEP Miners have advanced to the Conference USA Championship game, so the one seed, Sam Houston, is out. The two seed, Louisiana Tech, lost in the quarters. Western Kentucky as the three seed, trying to make it to the CUSA Championship game and win the Conference USA Tournament for the first time. Their last two conference tournament wins were both in the Sun Belt in 2012 and 2013 before they joined Conference USA. Yeah, and right now, obviously with 17 minutes to go, you got a lot of basketball left. But it's going to be very important that Middle Tennessee, you got, they got to get quality shots. Good ball movement leads to a good look, but the same result. Offensive rebound by Buford. Here's Coleman Jones, power dribble, draws three defenders and another miss. Coleman Jones is now 0 for 5, scoreless in the game. And not only, you know, you miss quite a few of those shots. You, you need a couple offensive rebounds. Get some second chance points. But that's what Coach Lutz talked about. He wanted Middle to be one and done. You see, they're not getting any of their shots. King misses. He's still scoreless. So Coleman Jones and King, who average 24 points per game between them, zero for Middle Tennessee. That three won't go for McHenry. Long run out, Lander nearly got it, but Porter controls for the Blue Raiders. Buford off his hands out of bounds, and that's just an eye roll from Nick McDevitt as Middle Tennessee is falling apart in the second half. Well, sometimes there's advantages to not knowing exactly what's going on in the basketball game because Middle Tennessee is getting rolled right now by Western Kentucky. Our Reese's player profile, Baba Carfa, went to the NBA Academy in Senegal, then College of Charleston, and now in his first year as a Western Kentucky Hilltopper, he's been solid on both ends of the floor. Our Reese's player profile.
so we talked about Western Kentucky's offense but just as important they're holding Middle Tennessee to 34 percent they have forced four turnovers in the last three minutes here's a little high low play that they like to run for Howard Follows his miss, Rodney Howard on the offensive glass. Yeah, so a little misdirection, then they'll zipper or bring the guard up to the top of the key when he sets that down screen and they try to really just uh, punch it inside. Howard has four points and one rebound in the game, so Western Kentucky has built this lead without a big contribution from their sixth man, Rodney Howard. And if you'd have told us coming into this game that did, that Western Kentucky would be up by 28, you probably would think that Howard has double figures. Howard keeps this one alive, but Middle Tennessee corrals and has a second chance. Justin Porter hits the three. 11 in the game for Justin Porter. He's been the bright spot for Middle Tennessee. And down 28 at the time, now 25. You don't want to launch threes and try to cut into this deficit. There's no 25 or 28 point play, but you have to be really aggressive to look at those wide open threes. Colin Bay gives it up. Tegan Moore misses the floater. There's another rebound for Howard. His second offensive rebound in as many trips. Colin Bay underneath. Tough two for Enoch Colombe, the junior from Quebec. We just got a little bit of international flavor on this Western Kentucky team. Ball from Senegal, Colombe from Quebec. Howard from Ypsilanti, Michigan. That doesn't count. <laughs> Jalen Jordan, the seventh year senior. Rebounded by Howard. Well, now Howard's becoming a presence. That's three rebounds in the last two minutes for Rodney Howard. He's got terrific hands. Colin Bay gets fouled. That one's on the floor. Well, if you didn't see earlier today, Tennessee losing to Mississippi State. So that impacts the race for the final number one seed between Arizona, North Carolina, and Tennessee. I know North Carolina probably would love to have that number one seed, even if that means they go out west. Right. So they have to be in the same bracket with Connecticut out east, potentially. So right now, Jerry Palm projects North Carolina as that fourth number one seed. I think the top three are pretty much locked up. You've gone Houston and Purdue. And North Carolina travels well, so if the game is in Alaska, their fans will go. I don't think Alaska has a regional this no, year. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Howard has another rebound. So right after we talked about it, how he hasn't been impactful, here goes the big man for Western Kentucky. That's now six points and four rebounds in a hurry for Rodney Howard. Yeah, and it's hard to come back and he gets going. Middle Tennessee State just looks a little defeated right now. Not even a wide open look goes for Jacob Johnson. And, you know, if you're Western, do you want to continue to play fast? You know, maybe move the ball around a little bit more. The, the clock is definitely your friend. Or you just stick with your same style of going 50 miles an hour. That one spins in for Chris Loof, who's been a bright spot off the bench for Middle Tennessee. The seventh made three for Middle Tennessee. Timeout, Nick McDevitt and the Blue Raiders. It is all Western Kentucky. We're back in 30 seconds. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. It's Conference USA semifinal number two with the three-seed Western Kentucky rolling over the seven-seed Middle Tennessee. The Blue Raiders part of a four-way tie for fourth place. They took out the two-seed Louisiana Tech in the quarters, but semifinal number two is all Western Kentucky. I mean, we talked before this one started, it was going to be all about the tempo, and Western Kentucky has dominated with their pace of play since the opening tip. 51% shooting in the game for Western Kentucky. 
They've held Middle Tennessee to only 34% shooting. So both ends of the floor effective for the Hilltop. Yeah, and it's just hard sometimes to kind of push the right buttons and but you have this team that just keeps coming at you. It waves, players coming off the bench. And, you know, obviously, you, you take a guy like Howard, I mean, he, was, he can really start for Western Kentucky. He can start for, you know, any team in Conference USA and even outside. But you have the luxury of bringing this type of talented player off the bench. Howard played at both Georgia and Georgia Tech, so that's high yeah. D1 talent as Porter gets fouled by Lander on a three-point shot. So three free throws coming for Justin Porter. Team up, hang on, take the ride. PBR teams coming this July. And Tiffany Blackman, Avery Johnson, Carter Blackburn from Huntsville, Alabama, where it's all Western Kentucky. Wasn't I just asking about PBR? Yes, you were. Night? Yes, you were. Teams coming this July, wow. Avery. Wow. I heard this really Buckle popular. up. Yes. yes, it is. You may have to tune in and see what's going on. Well, you know where to find it right here on CBS Sports <laughs> Network. That's what we call the extended promo. Well done, Avery. Border has 14 for Middle Tennessee. The lead is 23. The Blue Raider faithful, and then under Kermit Davis, they won the Conference USA titles in both 2016 and 2017. Were picked preseason first this year, but that was before the injury. The Cam Weston at point changed the season for Middle Tennessee. And if, if you're Middle Tennessee State, you're just really trying to get this lead somewhere around 10 points with five minutes to go. Tough tumble for Jalen Jordan. Leading to a run out and a foul called on Justin Buford as Lander continues to push the pace. Christian Lander slowly gets up for Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers by 23 in CUSA. Let's revisit our keys to the game brought to you by Ace, the helpful place, Advantage Western Kentucky. Well, I hope we didn't uh, jinx Coleman Jones because we said he needed north of 18 points. He hasn't scored, unfortunately. They've done a nice job of playing defense without fouling. Uh, but look at Western Kentucky. Inside scoring the 24 points in the paint, and their bench has been outstanding. I guess instead of no hands, I should have suggested no threes. Right, because nine made threes. I mean, Western Kentucky, you're talking about points in the paint. Well, they've been points inside and outside. They're shooting 53% from three point. And Lander has been terrific off the bench. That is now 12 points for the senior from Evansville, Indiana. Former Indiana Hoosier. But even without. You know, Allen right now, look at the, just the waves of players. <laughs> you're not really ever downgraded when you go to the bench. You mentioned Dante Allen out with a knee injury. He's been ruled out for the rest of the game for Western Kentucky. And if the Hilltoppers go on to win this game and play UTEP tomorrow, that's going to be a major question mark. Dante Allen, the senior who averages eight and a half points per game. At least he'll have a little bit more time to maybe get some treatment if it's not a serious injury. Howard called for the travel. You'll have a lot more to do tomorrow morning with your afternoon Carter, since we're not on until tomorrow night. We're going to have to find uh, some hiking paths around Huntsville, Alabama. So if we can get in 36 tomorrow as 8.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. The five seed UTEP Miners go for their first Conference USA title against the winner of this game between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. The three seed Western Kentucky, the top seed remaining in CUSA as the number one seed Sam Houston and two seed Louisiana Tech have both gone down. And like I said, funny things happen sometimes during the regular season in conference play, but this Western Kentucky team looks like a, just a well-balanced team. They don't have one strength. They, they have a variety of strengths. They have players that can switch on pick and rolls, trap pick and rolls defensively. They don't have to go with one area. That, 
player for scoring. Well, we're not there yet, but if you have Western Kentucky versus UTEP and the championship of Conference USA, their regular season meetings were 93 to 87 and 90 to 80. They split home and home with UTEP. So the Miners are capable of scoring with Western Kentucky. And because of what's happened, it's not even about who's favorite. It's who can play the best. We've seen the top two seeds get upset. More bad news for Middle Tennessee. Justin Porter has just picked up his fourth personal foul, sending Enoch Columbay to the free throw line. He left it short, boarded by Green. Nice run to the hoop for Jacob Johnson, the junior from Minneapolis. But you see how fast Western Kentucky got the ball in bounds, up the floor. Try, they want to get the ball across half court in three seconds. And now look at the ball movement and player movement. That's what Nick McDevitt said, the difference between Western Kentucky and a lot of teams who want to run. They will run directly off of your made baskets as Brandon Newman hits a top two. See that possession right there? You're looking at a team that can really surprise some, some people moving forward. Nice follow from Trey Green. Because they recognize that they want to play fast, but when they couldn't score off that initial thrust, then the ball is moving. Players are moving their bodies. You still got the post-up game here with Howard. If you, you have access to this, you got to double team it. If you don't, he'll make you pay. He didn't do it that time. Loof has the rebound. Porter still in the game with four personal fouls. Buford lines up the three, boarded by Tegan Moore. Old freshman team player for Western Kentucky. And I'm just a little shocked. I know Middle's concerned about Western Kentucky's uh, transition, but you gotta send more players to the basket at this point. Newman has the 10th made three of the game for Western Kentucky. 56% from beyond the arc. Two rolls out, Colin Bay has the rebound. This feels later in the game than 8.30 to go because Western Kentucky is now pulling back on the tempo and running clock in the half court. And I guarantee you this, um, in this situation, you have some guys deep on the bench that's probably a part of the scout team that's saying, please keep this lead <laughs> so we can get in and get some run. And yet Howard commits a silly foul. That's his second. Yeah, and again, we, we talked about it earlier. The routes that M Middle Tennessee is trying to take on some of these staggered screens, they're trying to go under instead of fighting over and Westerns made them pay the price. That's been a mistake from the get-go by Middle Tennessee, just some scouting report lapses by the Blue Raiders. Yep. And you would expect sometimes those lapses if they've never played in the regular season, but when you've seen each other twice. This is the third meeting. Yeah. Holman Jones still scoreless in the game for Middle Tennessee. Banging down low with Paul. Green, this is in tight. Paul has the rebound. Into the hands of Jack Edlin. Yeah, and because of how they're performing, Coach Lux is, doesn't have to overuse anybody, so they should be pretty fresh. Um, That's pretty fresh. Yeah, that was Dougie Fresh. You don't know who that is. Right? I know Dougie Fresh. <laughs> McHenry doing him proud. That's 16 in the game now for Don McHenry. Buford loses the handle, finds Green in the corner, missed three, boarded by McHenry. Man, you see the rotations on defense. Just when uh, Middle Tennessee thinks they have an open shot, somebody's flying out. So. Western Kentucky's bringing the energy on defense and offense. Woo, woo. Dougie Fresh again. I like that. Call him Donnie Fresh. 18 now for Don McHenry, the junior from Milwaukee. 
Newman nearly got a steal in the backcourt. All Western Kentucky. Don McGivney's putting on a show now. Oh, he's putting them in a blender, baby, with the nice snap back jump shot. And the Western Kentucky Hilltopper fans are really excited. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ace, the helpful place. The water trail in downtown Huntsville, Alabama, host of the Conference USA Tournament for the first year. And a three seed Western Kentucky, the top seed remaining in the Conference USA Tournament. Looks like they are rolling towards a championship matchup with Utah. Yeah, they're rolling down the river. This matchup against them. UTEP team with Tay Hardy who got in foul trouble and fouled out, but had 18 points. And nice look, Newman to Fah inside. Babakar Fah. Wow. That's a Kentucky man. They're getting extremely hot at the right time of the season. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Mentioned the four-game losing streak coming into the Conference USA Tournament, but they beat New Mexico State handily, 89-69 in the quarterfinals last night, and they look fresh coming back against Middle Tennessee the day after a late-night quarterfinal win. Yeah, you thought Middle Tennessee would be a team that was a little bit more energized. But this is a game also, you know, where Middle is they're really missing Cam. Weston in the situation like this. Holman Jones, who's still scoreless, has a second chance. He's banging with Pa down low. There, finally, is the first basket of the game for Jared Coleman Jones. And some discussion. There's going to be a technical foul called on Elias King. Antonio Petty quickly and to separate the Hilltoppers and the Blue Raiders, but a T on Elias King. Yeah, and if you, Christian Lander, you have 12 points. You're two for five from three. You need to be available for this game tomorrow. I would not try to get in any altercation with anybody on the floor. But watch, watch Landers right here. I wouldn't call, I wouldn't call that a punch, but why are you even doing this? And that shove right, right there, there. got King the tee. And that shove solidifies it. Yeah, Gary Maxwell was ready to call the tee, but Antonio Petty beat him to it. Yeah, and when you're winning game, you're really getting the best of this Middle Tennessee team. You, you don't need to embarrass the team or be arrogant. There's still got to be a sense, sort of sense of professionalism, but Coach Lutz, he'll deal with it, he and his assistants. And it's probably good that Landers is out of the game now because they you want him to stay healthy for tomorrow and be a bit. Missed free throw from Coleman Jones. Tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the five-seed UTEP Miners go for their first Conference USA title and their first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2010 against the winner between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. And it looks like I Western Kentucky is going to meet UTEP. What's the over and under on steals tomorrow for UTEP? I would... Well, UTEP, why don't they have in game one? 14 steals, I believe. They average 11 and a half. That's tops in the nation. Right. 10 steals in this game for Western Kentucky. Yeah, well, I just think, you know, tomorrow is going to be very important if Western Kentucky wants to continue to have this type of output offensively. They got to take care of the basketball against a team that loves to play passing lanes and active hands. Oh, Newman took a pop. And by the way, to clean up the technical foul, there was a double technical foul called on both King and Landers. So both get the technical foul there. We saw the take on Elias King, but Christian Lander gets a technical foul as well. 
So double T was the call on King and Lander. And then Newman took a shot to the eye, but no foul called on that play. So it's just dead ball out of bounds to Western Kentucky. Edelin misses the three. Well, the bench would have gone in an uproar there. Edelin had made that three. He's made only six shots on the year. One of those a three. So, yeah. Edelin, who's played a bunch of minutes at the point for Western Kentucky, to your point, I means Steve Lutz trying to limit minutes, getting ready for a presumptive trip to the championship game tomorrow. Edelin's played a lot of minutes, the freshman from Louisville. Still 4.35 to go. Coleman Jones finally making an impact on the game for Middle Tennessee. Even though he has only one made field goal, he does have seven rebounds and two assists. So he's been active, just not scoring. Yeah, and he can go back and have an opportunity to watch, see where he can improve. It. Nice finish. By Marable. DJ Maribel. That foul is on the floor, one and one coming. Well, the big upset in the MAC was the number one seed Toledo going down to Kent State. So next on CBS Sports Network, the eight seed Kent State against five seed Bowling Green with Akron and Ohio later tonight on CBS Sports Network. That's one of the major upsets of Bracket Week. We have some teams that are going to benefit from those upsets and some that won't. He pointed out earlier the big yeah. one in the A-10 with Dayton losing the top three seeds out in the A-10. So whoever ends up as the A-10 champion, that's a that's a bid stealer. Bad news for the teams like Indiana State who are riding the bubble. New Mexico on the bubble as well. And you know, in the A-10, well, Yola Chicago was having an outstanding year. That's one of the big bounce back yeah, Coach stories Valentine. of the year. Yeah. Justin, Justin Porter has fouled out. So Porter exits with 14 points in the game for Middle Tennessee. For those of you tuning in for the back semifinal between Kent State and Bowling Green, you'll be able to find it streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it tips off. And, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. Under four minutes to go in a game dominated by Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers have shot 51% and held Middle Tennessee to 31%. So the defensive effort just as impressive as the offensive effort. Foul on Maribel sends us to an official timeout. Western Kentucky, 347 from the title game. The Max semifinal between Kent State and Bowling Green is underway and now available streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get you out there as soon as this one is over. That gentleman has the opportunity to tune in for Kent State and Bowling Green on the CBS Sports app. <laughs> he's, if he so chooses. He's streaming. He's streaming. <laughs> streaming something. I'm glad he's not dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> They split the regular season, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. But this semifinal matchup has been all Hilltoppers. Jared Coleman Jones at the free throw line, but too little too late for the big man from Jacksonville, Florida, for the Blue Raiders. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, in the regular season, you know, you have five or six or seven more games, ten more games. You can basically just tear this tape up and say, we don't even need to look at it. That, that Those were imposters playing. But now, this time of the year is the worst time to have this type of effort. It's worth repeating the scores when it was in El Paso, a 93-87 win for the Miners. When it was in 
Bowling Green, Kentucky, 90 to 80, Western Kentucky on UTEP. There's the 11th made three of the game for Western Kentucky. As we look ahead to that championship matchup, we'll see if the Miners can score with Western Kentucky, unlike Middle Tennessee has been able to this afternoon. 15 now for Lander off the bench for Western Kentucky. Trey Green fouled on the way to the hoop. Foul is on Jalen Dorsey, as you predicted. Western Kentucky going deep at the bench in the yeah. final minutes of this one. I'm a little surprised Lander is still in the game. Three made threes. He has an assist. Oh, here, here's the sub. Okay. Yeah, sure enough. Lander's coming out. And Tyler Olden, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, into the game for Western Kentucky. He's a fan favorite. He's, he's made 15 appearances over three years. So he is excited to get in the game. Just his seventh appearance of the year. So if you had Tyler Olden into the game with over three minutes to go, a surprising appearance early for Tyler Olden in this game. And the funny thing is, Tyler Olden on the scout team, he probably had to play the role of one of the middle Tennessee players. So he should know exactly what they're doing offensively. Well, the question is, will Tyler Olden get a shot off? He's made two shots on the season in his six previous appearances, both of them threes. So we know where his range is. Olden and Eaglin in the backcourt now for Western Kentucky. Jalen Dorsey in the game as well, the junior from Berea, Kentucky. Missed three, boarded by Tegan Moore. Yeah, Jack Dubinville, number 55, is in for Middle Tennessee. He's getting him some run. He's a walk on. One made basket on the year for Jack Jubinville. I think that's the drama we have left in the last two plus minutes of this blowout semifinal number two is which of the walk on players is going to get a shot off for Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. That three won't go from Tegan Moore. Another substitution for Middle Tennessee is Isaiah Lightsey is in, so we'll go ahead and project Western Kentucky as the winner of this semifinal matchup, meaning the five-seed UTEP, the three-seed Western Kentucky. The winner is on to the NCAA tournament as the representative from Conference USA in 2024. Jubinville kicks. The three won't go for Lightsey. Olden is going to try the three and airball it. Well, he didn't hesitate to get it up, did he? Yeah, but Juven, you know, <laughs> no, that was Olden. He's got to maybe pass the ball a little bit. Maybe a better look at three better than what he got there. I don't know if that's quite his game. Now two for seven shooting on the year. A little push off, got away with it from Juvenville. You think that would have been a foul if we weren't just play game. on yeah that's that's play on at Is this that point what you're saying I think so I think that was a wisely adjudicated play on here comes Olden he wants to get it up guarded by Jubinville Olden from the baseline he is over two shooting in the game Tyler Olden the junior from Scottsdale Arizona Hillcrest prep here's a run out Edlin throws it in reverse it won't go and a turnover into the hands of Trey Green. Green gets it back. Looks like exhibition basketball in the last minute here. Quick stoppage of the clock. Or the reset of the shot clock, I believe. So Amy Bonner, quick stoppage of play. Play on, Western Kentucky dominant from the opening tip in the semifinal win over Middle Tennessee. Yeah, just very impressive performance from start to finish. 
there was really no letdown in their game. They dominated this game, shot the ball extremely well. Four players in double figures. 11 made threes in the game for Western Kentucky. 11 of 22. Shot clock violation taken by Western Kentucky, so Middle Tennessee will inbound, and this one's going to go in the books. Being classy play by Western Kentucky, not even attempting a shot on that last possession. Very classy. They split the regular season, but Western Kentucky dominates the seven seed Middle Tennessee. Steve Lutz in year one as coach of the Hilltoppers has guided Western Kentucky to the Conference USA Championship game where UTEP awaits. So for Avery Johnson, Tiffany Blackman, our entire crew, this is Carter Blackburn. Coming up next, we'll send you to Cleveland for the max semifinals between Kent State and Bowling Green right after these messages. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.